Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, lipoproteins and the transportation of lipids around the body. Okay, so we're currently in the process of discussing the endogenous pathway. So remember, the endogenous pathway is the way that we deliver lipid molecules to our skeletal muscle and to our cardiac muscle, uh, even when we are in the fasted state, so when there isn't lipids coming in through exogenous sources. So what happens? happens is the adipocytes start breaking down the triacylglycerols which they have stored within this large droplet that takes up most of their cytoplasm and they start breaking them down to release free fatty acids which they release directly into the blood. These free fatty acids bind to uh, a protein called albumin which is within the blood and albumin is then going to deliver the free fatty acids to hepatocytes in the liver. The hepatocytes will take the free fatty acids into their cytoplasm and then what they'll do is they'll synthesize triacylglycerols back from those uh, free fatty acids. They will then produce lipoproteins which they will put into the blood and one of the key components of these lipoproteins is that in the core they contain a lot of triacylglycerols. They then have this uh, phospholipid monolayer surrounding them uh, which consists of many phospholipids, mainly phosphatidylcholine, also called lecithin, and also has cholesterol molecules dotted from here to there and then also apolipoproteins of these five types here. Okay, in addition, in the lipid core, you also have cholesterol esters. These very low density lipoproteins, as they're called, then go into the blood and they are going to deliver the triacylglycerols to uh, the uh, skeletal muscle tissue and to the cardiac muscle tissue. So they will go to capillaries within skeletal muscle tissue and within cardiac muscle tissue. And we've discussed that in capillaries uh, for skeletal and cardiac muscle tissue, uh, you have endothelial cells which have on their surface these glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol uh, high density lipoprotein binding protein uh, 1 molecules. These are on the outer surface of the endothelial cells and they are latched there by glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol. They form dimers and then on top of the dimer you then have uh, a homodimer of lipoprotein lipase and basically this is what you need in order to be able to harness uh, lipid molecules out of these very low density lipoproteins. The li lipoprotein lipase sticks into the uh, phospholipid monolayer of these very low density lipoproteins and binds to apolipoprotein C2 molecules which are within that phospholipid monolayer. Then what happens is the low density lipoprotein, sorry, not the low density lipoprotein, the uh, lipoprotein lipase will break down the triacylglycerol here into uh, two monoacylglycerol and then it will release two free fatty acid molecules which will cross the endothelium and go into the cardiac muscle or the skeletal muscle tissue. Okay, so that's how we deliver uh, fatty acids to our skeletal and cardiac muscle tissue even in the fasted state. The liver is producing these very low density lipoproteins. Now, as the very low density lipoproteins gradually become depleted of triacylglycerols, they gradually are start to be called intermediate density lipoproteins and then when they become really completely depleted of triacyl uh, glycerols they become known as low density lipoproteins. Now low density lipoproteins are much smaller than the uh, very low density lipoproteins. Okay so low density lipoproteins have a diameter uh, between 8 and 12 nanometers okay or 8 and 11 nanometers maybe uh, is what I gave you earlier but it, 8 to 12 is obviously um, also plausible right so uh, basically these are much smaller lipoprotein molecules but their basic structure is still the same they have a much smaller uh, phospholipid monolayer clearly which has a much smaller surface area so the very low density lipoprotein has been losing um, phospholipids as well 
and they actually only have a single apolipoprotein within them, okay, which is a massive great apolipoprotein. So I'll show it here in turquoise. So basically, as the very low density lipoprotein becomes depleted of its triacylglycerol molecules, what will also happen is some of the um, some of the apolipoproteins will also begin to fall out of the phospholipid monolayer as the phospholipid monolayer also gets smaller, and they'll just go into the blood. Okay. Uh, so what you end up with in these tiny little low density lipoproteins is a single apolipoprotein, and the one which remains is apolipoprotein at B100, okay, which is an absolutely massive apolipoprotein. Of all the different types of apolipoprotein, apolipoprotein B100 is the biggest of them all, okay, so it's a big, big apolipoprotein. So, what we now have is apolipoprotein B100, our only apolipoprotein in LDL. All LDL molecules have a single apolipoprotein, and this is apolipoprotein B100. Okay, uh, then what we also then have is our phospholipid monolayer here, like so. So here's our monolayer of phospholipids. And within that phospholipid monolayer, of course, you will have lots of cholesterol molecules, okay, um, that will have their alcohol groups facing out. So I'll put these cholesterol molecules in red, shown amongst the phospholipids here. So here are a few cholesterol molecules dotted here and there. Okay, and then in the core, remember we've lost most of our triacylglycerol molecules now. So in the core, we have a huge number of cholesterol esters. So the major component of LDL molecules is cholesterol along with cholesterol esters, which is why LDL molecules are often just referred to as cholesterol, okay? That's why the media often refers to them as cholesterol. Now, the media will often call these bad cholesterol because another type of lipoprotein, high-density lipoprotein, they are nearly entirely composed of cholesterol as well, so they're also referred to as cholesterol, and they're referred to as good cholesterol. And we'll see what the purpose of HDL is later. But the problem with LDL is that if you have too much of it within the blood, it can actually lead to uh, the development of atherosclerotic plaques. Okay, so it's, uh, it's very physiologically important. Obviously, this endogenous pathway is extremely physiologically important, and LDL is just the last part of this pathway. Okay, so what do we do with these LDL molecules? Well, firstly, cholesterol does actually have a use within the body. We have it within all our cell membranes, so what we can use the LDL molecules to do is go around and give out cholesterol molecules to cells, basically. So you do indeed have certain tissues which are going to be building potentially bigger plasma membranes which might require more cholesterol, okay? And they will have receptors for LDL which recognize uh, the apolipoprotein B100 and uh, they will uh, endocytose the LDL and take out the cholesterol and use it uh, to uh, produce plasma membranes. So, uh, basically, adipocytes will generally have a receptor for LDL, so we'll draw these cells here. So here is our adipocyte with its large storage vesicle which contains triglycerides, okay, but it will have a receptor for LDL known as the low-density lipoprotein receptor, so I'll just call this the LDL-R, and basically this will bind to our LDL here, so this blob here represents our LDL, and this will result in the endocytosis of the LDL, and the cholesterol that the cell gets from the endocytosis of that LDL will be used in the plasma membrane. Okay, so adipocytes have LDL receptors so that they can uh, increase the size of their cell membranes. In addition, uh, myocytes also have LDL receptors, particularly skeletal muscle cells. Okay, so here we have a skeletal muscle cell. And of course, basically, if your muscles grow, 
it is not because the cells themselves are dividing. You don't get division of skeletal muscle cells. Instead, it's that the skeletal muscle cells are getting bigger. So in order to get bigger, they're going to need to have greater surface area cell membranes. So they're going to have to increase the size of their cell membranes. And so they'll have LDL receptors on them as well, so that they can take up these LDL molecules and use the cholesterol in the formation of new cell membranes. And of course, they'll also use the lecithin as well, which they get from these LDL molecules. OK, so these are examples of extra hepatic uh, tissues which have LDL receptors. So these are extra hepatic tissues uh, with LDL receptors. There is one more example, another physiologically important example of an extra hepatic tissue which has an LDL receptor expression on its surface. And these are cells of the adrenal glands. Okay, so sitting above the kidney, you have adrenal glands. Okay, uh, you have one above each kidney. So you have two kidneys and you have an adrenal gland above each kidney. So this is supposed to represent the adrenal glands. And basically, um, the adrenal glands are split into uh, two major portions. Okay, you have the adrenal medulla at the center here, which is involved in the synthesis of uh, adrenaline, okay, after, um, well, adrenaline is named after the adrenal glands, that's where it gets its name, because it's produced within the adrenal glands, okay, so this is the adrenal mother, and this produces adrenaline, which is a small molecule uh, based on the amino acid tyrosine. Okay, whereas the cortex of the adrenal gland, which is the outer portion, uh, this is involved in steroid hormone synthesis. Okay, so examples are you synthesize uh, glucocorticoids such as cholesterol. Uh, you also synthesize mineralocorticoids such as uh, aldosterone. And then you also secrete sex steroids uh, such as estrogens, progesterones, uh, uh, and um, testosterone as well. Okay, so basically, uh, the adrenal cortex is synthesizing steroids, and the starting point for the synthesis of steroids is that you need cholesterol molecules. So basically, cells of the adrenal cortex also have on their surface LDL receptors. So if I pick out a little cell from the adrenal cortex, it's going to have on its surface an LDL receptor so that basically LDL molecules combined to that LDL uh, receptor and they can deliver cholesterol molecules to the cells of the adrenal cortex. Okay, right, so that's the final uh, example of an extra hepatic tissue with LDL receptors on their surface. Okay, so LDL does go to other tissues other than just the liver and deliver cholesterol and cholesterol esters to these tissues, along with obviously the uh, phosphatidylcholine that you've also got there and the single apolipoprotein B100. But mainly what happens is the LDL molecules, the low-density lipoproteins, they go back to the liver, basically. So they're going to go back to the liver. So here's my picture of the liver, and basically the hepatocytes will have receptors on their surface for LDL. So here is the LDL receptor on the surface of the hepatocyte. The LDL will bind there and it will be endocytosed into the hepatocyte, and that will deliver cholesterol, cholesterol esters, phosphatidylcholine, and the apolipoprotein B100 back to this hepatocyte here. So here's our hepatocyte. And basically, as soon as the cholesterol esters get into the cytoplasm of the hepatocyte, they will be cleaved apart to make cholesterol and uh, also a free fatty acid. Now, what will the hepatocytes do with the cholesterol? Well, they, of course, have cell membranes as well, so they might put it into their plasma membranes. They will, of course, synthesize bile acids uh, from the cholesterol. Okay, so they'll use the cholesterol to produce bile acids. And you have to remember, where did the cholesterol of the LDL molecules originally come from? Well, it came from the liver, so it's just being recycled. So it's not as though we're bringing additional cholesterol back to the hepatocytes. Remember, the liver put it into the VLDL, the very low-density lipoproteins, and that's just getting it back in the form of the LDL. Okay. 
and uh, also you can actually store cholesterol within hepatocytes. You can form uh, little uh, droplets which have uh, cholesterol within them, okay, known as storage droplets. Okay, but it's actually cholesterol esters which are stored within these storage droplets. So I'll just put a nucleus so that you don't confuse that for my nucleus. So this is my storage vesicle, okay, or storage droplet, whatever you want to call it. And uh, basically, um, only cholesterol esters can be stored in here. So what you do is you actually uh, deesterify uh, the cholesterol esters back to cholesterol and long chain carboxylic acids, and then you're going to reesterify the cholesterol to put it back into the form of cholesterol esters, which can then be stored in your storage droplet here. Okay, so there is an enzyme, a special enzyme within liver cells, which adds long-chain carboxylic acid onto cholesterol molecules and therefore synthesizes uh, cholesterol uh, esters. Okay, and this is known as acyl-CoA, cholesterol acyl transferase. Okay, so cholesterol acyl transferase. So acyl-CoA cholesterol acyl transferase. And for short, acyl-CoA cholesterol, sorry, I keep saying cholesterol, it should be cholesterol. Uh, so acyl-CoA cholesterol acyl transferase is often abbreviated to ACAT for short. So A for acyl-CoA, C for cholesterol, A for acyl, and then T for transferase, ACAT. So ACAT will convert the cholesterol back into cholesterol esters, and then the cholesterol esters can then be stored in storage droplets within the cytoplasm of the hepatocyte. Okay, right, so that's what the liver uh, does then. And this is the endogenous pathway now complete, basically. We have gone through the synthesis of these VLDLs, uh, which will deliver the triacylglycerols to uh, the uh, skeletal and cardiac muscle tissues. And then they gradually get depleted and form first these intermediate density lipoproteins, IDL, and then finally these low density lipoproteins, LDL, and then the LDL really comes back to the liver. It can go elsewhere and deliver uh, cholesterol esters and cholesterol to other extrahepatic tissues, but mainly it's going to come back to the liver. Okay, right. Uh, and the purpose of all of that is so that we can deliver uh, a supply of uh, long-chain carboxylic acids to our skeletal muscle cells and our cardiac muscle cells, which prefer using fat as their energy source rather than carbohydrate. Okay, right. So, we'll call it there for this video, and in the next video, what we're going to move on to is something that stands on its own, basically. All of these other ones that we've seen, VLDL, IDL, and LDL, they were about delivering long-chain carboxylic acids to uh, skeletal and cardiac muscle cells in the fasting state, and chylomicrons were about delivering uh, long-chain carboxylic acids to skeletal and cardiac muscle cells, along with adipocytes in the well-fed state. Okay, we're now going to turn our attention to HDL, high-density lipoprotein, which sits on its own as a separate one. It's basically the cleaner. It's going to go around and clean up the mess that occurs because of this. And basically, what is it going to mop up? Well, it's going to mop up cholesterol. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.